The Taliban are not reformed. They're not new. They have a view of the world out of sync with modern times. They're going to give safe haven to al-Qaeda, who has ambitions to drive us out of the Mideast writ large and attack us because of our way of life. We will be going back into Afghanistan as we went back into Iraq and Syria. To the Hang on. You, are you, ser you oh, seriously yeah. think the United States will once again, we'll in, have to. in a foreseeable future, yes. put troops back into we'll Afghanistan? We'll have to. We'll have to, because the threat will go so will be so large. And South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham, he said quite clearly there, he believes that it will become necessary, incumbent upon the United States to go back to Afghanistan. He's a fierce critic of President Biden's Afghan withdrawal and believes that the nation could become a home for radical Islamic behavior once again. And it comes amid rising concern about terror threats that could increase, and that timetable has been sped up, according to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, for us here in the United States as we get close to the 20th anniversary of 9-11. It's a pretty unbelievable situation <laughs> that we find ourselves in as we reach this landmark. Let's bring in Fox News contributor General Keith Kellogg, former national security advisor to Vice President Pence and President Trump and, uh, and America First Policy Institute Center for American Security co-chair. General, always good to see you. Thank you very much uh, for joining me today. I'd love to start with a piece from this very strong Wall Street Journal editorial that I recommend everybody take a look at. It's called Our Friends, the Taliban. And here's the quote. This is one of the more extraordinary political transformations in U.S. history. The Taliban, the sponsors of Osama bin Laden and killers of Americans for 20 years, have overnight turned into a courted U.S. partner. Your thoughts on just that beginning of this uh, this piece and, and what Lindsey Graham, the senator, had to say over the weekend, General. Yeah, first of all, Martha, thanks for having me. I do yeah. appreciate it. Good Look, to see you. Um, I, give me a minute and I'll unpack it totally for you. Look, 20 years ago uh, on 9-11, I was in the Pentagon sitting between Secretary Rumsfeld and Dick Myers, the vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, because the, the uh, chairman was halfway across the Atlantic. And I watched uh, the entire day unfold. Fast forward to 20 years, and the same government that we uh, now see in, in Kabul is the same government we saw 20 years ago. And after 20 years, and thousands killed, and thousands wounded, and trillions of dollars spent, uh, we walk out w with a loss going forward, and with nothing to really show for it in, in Afghanistan. And there was something, that, and to say, to comment about what Senator Graham said, it's something I said to you a couple of months ago when we were in New York City and you, you asked me the question, what keeps you awake at night? Mm -hmm. And I said I was concerned about the will of the American president to take decisive action when it was needed. And the current president, I don't believe, has the will to take decisive action when needed. He's got a track record that shows that. And it goes back to most importantly, when we had Osama bin Laden in our gun sites in the Situation Room, he recommended to President Barack Obama that he not go after him. And I think, so to answer Senator Graham, I think if something happens in Afghanistan or external to Afghanistan, I'm not too sure the President of the United States has the will to, to engage going forward in, a, in an event like that. Look, this did not have to happen. When we worked the peace agreement, and I worked that for President Trump for four years in the White House, he brought me into the White House, and one of the tasks he gave me to was to oversee the Afghan peace process, which we did. We had a close plan to set with the Taliban, which part of that agreement was that they, they would not support any type of external threat to the United States of America, that means Al-Qaeda, or anybody else, uh, or any other threat to the United States. You can read it. You can pull it up on the State Department yeah. website and see what would actually happen yeah. and what we said. You know, I mean, it's so stunning to, to look at this. And I, and I think that the Taliban mm -hmm. agrees with you on the, the backbone of the president in, the, in terms of what he would be willing to do to push them back. Because we've seen that process, right, over the right. last several months. They just knocked over every single village all along the way. Um, and now, according to their own reports, they've uh, managed to clear the Pachir Valley, the Punjab Valley in the north, right. which is where the, the last resistance, Ahmoud Massoud, uh, was holding out up there. And now it seems like, probably, as this journal piece points out, with the help of U.S. military, uh, uh, you know, guns and, and vehicles, they've probably used those in order to do that. 
Um, so then you have Anthony Blinken saying, you know, the Taliban has committed to let anyone out of the country with proper documents. They can leave in a safe and orderly manner. They have said this privately and they've said this publicly to us many times. So it, I just think it, it turns a lot of people's stomachs to listen yeah. to the language that we're using when we talk about whether or not the Taliban is going to allow American citizens to leave the country if they have proper documents, General. Yeah, I mean, I, I, one word reaction, really? Uh, no, they're not gonna do that. They have all of the cards. They have run us out of the country. It was a, a, truly a strategic debacle going forward. And they don't believe that we're gonna back anything up with force. That's one thing you could say about President Trump. When, when he decided to use force, we used it, and we used it forcefully. I mean, we got Soleimani, we got Baghdadi, we went after uh, the Syrian the targets when they used nerve gas. He wasn't afraid to go uh, and use aggressive action when we needed to. Biden hasn't done that, and his entire national security team has not proven me they're willing to do that. So I have real concerns and questions about uh, us, uh, the Taliban supporting uh, us and doing anything. They're going to do what they want to do, not what we want to do. And uh, that's the reason I go back to what Senator Graham said about using force. It may be required, but the question is, will we do it? Yeah. And I'm not, somebody's going to have to convince me and show me that we're willing to do it. And Martha, I just don't see it. Well, and you got to wonder what Iran thinks when they look at what they've yeah. watched happen, right? All these mm -hmm. dominoes fall and nothing, mm -hmm. right? Or right. what North Korea thinks when they look at this situation. All of these are sending signals to the global community about what these, what the stature is of, of the administration right now and, and whether or not they're willing to lean in on some of these situations. General Kellogg, it's always good to see you, sir. Thank you very Thanks, much. Martha. Good to have you Thank with you. us.